know about you, but I feel like I have seen checkered prints popping up everywhere and I'm trying so hard to resist filling every corner of my home and my wardrobe with it because I don't want to overdo it, but finally I have figured out the perfect DIY piece to introduce the checkered prints into my life. I found a trousers they've got like the classic high waist fit with a waistband that front kind of like hidden zipper style some pockets and then like a straight leg finish I made these probably like over a month ago now and we went away on a trip and I've been able to wear them like styled up going out to a nice lunch just out and about running around in a very cute motel that we found on the road and also just like wearing baggy shirts jumpers I find them to be such a versatile number and yes I've made it in this very like bold checkered pattern which I think can be the statement of outfits but I also want to make a few in like some more simple tones as well because I feel like it's just a classic to have in any wardrobe it has my full daily essentials approval and now if you want to add it to your wardrobe too this is what you'll need to follow along to bring this garment to life today's just not my day there's like a rock festival down the road planes flying over the top Roscoe's snoring next to me loud cars are in town a lot of obstacles so if you hear lots of noise in the background that is why i will be doing a self-drafting process so you will need a pair of pants to reference it will kind of trace around to create a pattern for this piece it doesn't have to be the exact fit or style we can kind of adjust seam allowance and measurements and whatnot to get it to this more trouser look essentially all you need is something that you kind of like the fit of the crotch area so you can even work with a pair of shorts and we could add length onto it i had a very tight pair of high-waisted jeans and i just knew that i needed to add more seam allowance when it came to that point once you have that reference pair of pants and we can add high add length, add width and all that jazz so you'll then need some material. I will put the recommended measurements you'll need per size below in the description of this video and for the actual material itself I really feel like this is quite a versatile number and you can make it out of anything. If you want to wear it for like warmer months you could have like a denim, corduroy, thicker linen, etc etc if you want to make it more flowy and lightweight for summer you could use like a linen cotton whatever else you come across this material in particular as i know there will probably be questions about it is i sourced it from spoonflower they did kindly gift it to me so thanks to them regardless of it being gifted i have used their stuff before and i do love their process i obviously just searched check and print this one caught my attention and then got it printed onto the cotton lawn material which is super lightweight and i hadn't used the cotton lawn before this but i'm super impressed with it, it is a bit transparent in like say those white areas so I've actually added a lining to this material it was actually just an old flannelette sheet that I had laying around so that meant I could wear it in warmer months so once you have figured out the style of material you use got the right amount we will then need some matching thread to go with your material some fabric scissors fabric chalk pins a measuring tape one to two buttons depending on how you want to finish this top area and then you'll need a zip for this front top section as well. I literally just had this one laying around in my scrap pile that I'd cut off another garment, so luckily it kind of matched the color of this. You at least want the zip to go from your waist area down to a place that is comfortable for you to wear it in. For me, that was about a six inch length. So then once you have all of that, then you will just need your trusty old sewing machine, and then we are up to the steps of bringing this garment to life. But before we dive into that, I really want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. If you're familiar with my videos, you would know that I have partner with them before and that's because I just genuinely use their platform I love it it's such an amazing point of access for when you want to level up in a certain niche or if you just are bored and want to explore new hobbies and things and whatnot they've got everything on there available for you to dive deep into the courses on there are broken down into bite-sized pieces so that you can kind of tackle it stage by stage for me I have done things like logo design animation marketing website design in particular at the moment I've been really getting into Marcus Brownlee's videos I just find it really interesting how he dissects how to plan and execute engaging video content that efficiently gets across the intended information all while creating an enjoyable experience for the viewers. I think that is definitely something that is worthwhile for me if I want to continue building this channel. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. I'm sure if you are watching this video, you are a person who is intrigued about getting creative and learning new things, so highly recommend checking out Skillshare. And they've kindly shared an offer for you guys to get involved. So the first 1,000 people to click through in the link in the description of this video video will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership and then after that it's about $10 a month. Ready? Time to get back into making these pants. 
First up, let's lay down our material and grab our reference pants. Like I mentioned earlier, we will be tracing around these to find our like pattern that we will be creating the pants from. For me, these pants, I really enjoy the high-waisted kind of tight fit around here. And then instead of following the tight fit around the legs, I'm just pretty much going to go straight down from the thigh area so it has that like straight leg trouser look. Again, because it is fitting well around the waist area, I'm only going to add about half an inch around there, figure out what I need to add down the bottom, and that should get it to a point where it is all fitting well. Likewise, if the pants that you're referencing are not high-waisted, make sure you add the amount to get it up to the high-waisted area. If you find they are too baggy, then maybe don't add too much seam allowance because that will help bring it in tighter. And if the pants that you're referencing are too tight, make sure you add the right amount of seam allowance to get it to the point where it will fit good. Just a little tip, it is always easier to make something bigger and take it in down the track. Whereas if you make it too small, it is a bit hard to add on more. If you're unsure, maybe just add a bit of extra seam allowance. We'll try on things as we go and we'll make any adjustments. So do not fear, it'll all work out. Then folded my pants in half or quarters, so I was just focusing pretty much on one panel. Laid that down on my material, marked out the relevant seam allowance with my fabric chalk and cut out that first piece. One little note here, I did realize that the pants that I was referencing were quite shorter than what I wanted the final piece to be. So if I had done this again, I probably would have added quite a bit more length on the bottom so that they were that like longer trouser style. But once I trimmed out that first piece, I then used that as a template to cut the second piece and make sure when you do this process that you face the good sides of the material so they are a mirrored matching piece. Trimmed out that second piece. I then repeated the process for the back side so again just folded my reference pants so I was focusing on one of the back panels. Marked out all the relevant seam allowance and lengths that I needed to add on and then trimmed out this first piece, replicated it by laying it down and cutting out the second piece. And if you're like me and you need to add some lining there are two ways we can go about this. I have previously added lining into my linen collot tutorials and you would have seen there you pretty much essentially make the of pants you make the inner lining and then you just add them together at the waist at the end i think that works well for a flowy pant because they can kind of sit separately and do their thing for these pants they're going to be a bit of like a tighter form on my body and i think if the lining is sitting separately it could easily bunch up and kind of look a bit less than ideal when i'm wearing it what i'll be doing is i'll be matching the lining with its matching piece on the underside and just pretty much sewing it like it is just a part of the main panel and that way it gets hidden into the seams and it's all tight and secure and doesn't flap around and bunch up underneath. You should, at a bare minimum, have your four panels for the pants and then also your four pieces of lining if you're doing that process. We're going to focus on the two back pieces first and face them good sides facing. Again, if you are using lining, just add it in like it is on the inner side. We're then just going to pin and then sew down that curved crotch center seam and that is the back panels all joined and done. For the front side, there is a little bit of a different process for this obviously we need to add the zip into this front top section if you're not using lining you'll have to create some facing that is just an extra piece that we will be adding in to help layer the zip in there so what you'll need to do is cut a replicated piece in the exact shape of this curved area and about four inches wide and you'll need to do it for both of the front sides so let's focus on one of the front pieces and we're going to grab our zipper and face it with the good side of the zipper facing the good side of the material align this to the very top and side edges then place your facing or your lining over the top of this so it's a bit of a sandwiching process where the zipper gets locked in between once you're happy with the placement of these pop some pins in there and we'll be sewing from the top down to the point just past that little silver buckle that kind of indicates the bottom of the zipper sew this in place and then you can reveal the good sides now have the zipper tucked in between the main panel and the facing or the lining then if you'd like to you could grab an iron at this point and help to make it a little bit flatter and then we're just going to top stitch this edge that we have sewn down to the same point in line with the silver end of the zipper. So that's the first side done. Now we're going to grab the other main front panel that we haven't sewn yet, lay that with a good side facing up, and then we'll grab our lining or our facing and lay that down and sew the equivalent height of the zipper. You can see that I actually use the zipper to help mark the point to sew down to. Once you've sewn that line, I'd recommend doing a little understitch here by leaning the seam that we have just sewn towards the lining or the facing side and sewing that. That will just help make sure that that seam is nice and crisp when it is folded back over and that the lining or facing doesn't shift around. Once you've done that, you can again flip it over so the good sides are revealed 
and then it is time to attach the zipper to the other side. Now the key with making this that trouser style where it's kind of hidden underneath a little flap of material, align the edges of this center crotch so they're kind of sitting pretty much next to each other if not just overlapping by a little bit and then you'll find that the zipper just naturally falls into place from there. Once you're happy with the placement of that, we're then just going to pin the zipper onto the lining or the facing and not the actual main panel. Pop those pins in and shuffle your main panel out of the way so you don't accidentally sew it. And then we're just going to sew one simple line from the top to the bottom point, again in line with that like silver indication of the bottom of the zipper. Then you can flip it and realign the matching lining and front panels. It should end up looking like what I have where there is a little bit of the lining showing and that is what is going to end up covering our zipper. But first let's face the good sides of the material again and continue sewing down the center seam of the crotch which pretty much starts from the bottom of the zipper down into that bottom curved edge. Align that, pin it in place and then sew one line there. It is a bit of a tight spot to get into now because the zipper is there so you might need to do a bit of shuffling of material but once you're in there just sew that line closed. By doing that it helps us align the front section now a little bit better. So what I've done is flipped it so all the good sides are showing, shuffled over that bit of material so it is now covering the zipper. I've just popped a pin up the top so the material doesn't shuffle around and it stays where I would like it to sit. You know when you look at a pair of trousers they normally have that little like line that goes around the zipper? Well this is what we're going to create now and it helps just hold the material in place. That little silver buckle that I've been mentioning this whole time that indicates the bottom of the zipper. We need to make sure that we don't sew over that and ruin our needle. So find that and then kind of go about half an inch below that and that will be our starting point. And you can either do it in a curved way where you start there and curve around and then go up to the top or if you prefer to do straighter edges you can go straight across and then straight up. Either way grab your fabric chalk, mark out this area. You don't need to go any wider than two inches from the edge. I think mine ended up being about 1.5 inches. If you're worried that the fabric is going to shift around while you're sewing, you can do what I did and just pop some pins in various locations so that the lining or facing doesn't move around. Once you're happy with the line indication, then just pop it on the machine and follow this path. This step is optional. I personally wanted to add some pockets into this so it makes it a bit more practical to wear so I can pop my phone and keys and whatnot. Skip this step if you don't want pockets but if you do you can obviously add the pockets hidden into the seams I wanted them to be a bit of like a feature design piece so I've added them on the outside we need to cut out two rectangles and to figure out the width I measured about two-thirds of the pant area that I wanted to add the pocket onto once I figured out that width kept that in mind I then figured out how high I wanted it to be um, I'll put my measurements on the screen if for some reason that helps you figuring yours out I cut out two rectangles at these measurements then from the top center and one side center I drew a line and that is going to be the angle on the side of my pocket where you kind of enter all your things into the pocket. I made sure that when I did this on the second pocket side it was on the mirrored side because obviously they're going to be on opposite sides almost stuffed that up. I then double folded that angle that we cut and sewed a hem in place there and then it was time to add these pockets onto the pants. The top edge and the side edge that matches the edge of the pants will get hidden in the seam so I'm just going to leave them open and then I'm going to double fold the side edge that is closest to the inner area and the bottom edge that way it is like a hidden tucked away hem. If your material is one that doesn't really fold and stay in place this is where you could iron it to keep it folded and nice and crisp and clean before you sew it in place and then laid these pieces so that the top edges and the side edges were matching, pinned it in place and sewed down that inner edge that we folded and that bottom edge that we folded and that is your pocket attached. If you find it is moving around a little bit you can sew the other edges in place just making sure that you leave the angle open otherwise they will get hidden in the seams in the next steps. Cool so we have our pockets all added in now it is time to start assembling the piece even more. Lay down your back piece with the good sides facing up and then lay down your front piece so the good sides of the material are facing each other. Then what we're going to do is just sew down the two side seams and that center leg section. If you're like me and you want to add some side splits at the bottom area just make sure you mark out how far down you want to stop to allow for this split. I think I ended up stopping about six inches from the bottom and that's allowing at least an inch to be lost in the final hemming process. Figure out whatever you want your split to be, mark that point from the bottom and that is where you're going to stop. Again just to help your future self out make sure when you are sewing this side seam that you at least leave like a half an inch seam allowance so that when it comes time to the final folding process you've at least got some material there so you can hem it. Once you've got these edges all aligned and pinned in place just simply sew them and then it's kind of looking like a pair of pants. this is a good step to just throw it on 
and make sure that everything is fitting okay. I think I did actually have to take my waist in just a little bit. If you find it is oversized, make any adjustments if need be. Now that your waist area is hopefully all fitting good, we are going to use this as a reference measurement to create the waistband. So grab your measuring tape and we are going to measure this waist area. Now this is down to personal preference again, how you would like to create this waistband. You'll see that I have like that little extended tab area on my waistband. If I was to do this again, I don't know if I would add that. I forgot that it does naturally overlap so you could literally just add the button at the center top section. But if you do like that effect where there's kind of the strap that goes a little bit longer, you could add like two buttons there to keep it more secure. So once you kind of visualize what you want the final outcome to be, if you're just going to have it aligning to the very edge, we'll only add half an inch of seam allowance. Whereas if you're adding the extended section like I have, you'll add about three inches. So that is the length of the waistband that we'll be cutting out, our waist section plus whatever seam allowance. Figure out the final height that you would like it to be. Mine is going to be a quite small one, so it's only going to be one inch. Double that as we'll be folding it and then add an inch seam allowance. My cutting width slash height of the band ended up being three inches. So again, say if you wanted to try a thicker waistband and it was like 1.5 inches, you would double that, which would get you the three inches and you would add one inch of seam allowance. We're then gonna cut out one rectangle with these measurements that we just found, fold it good side spacing and just sew down the two short ends, leaving that very bottom area open. We'll then flip it back out and you can use like a pen or a clean paintbrush or something to push out those tips on the corners. And then we're going to do the process of adding this waistband onto the top of the pants. There's two ways we could do this. We could just do it very simply facing the good sides and then folding it up, then you're done. But then you also have like a seam kind of hanging out. Whereas the process I'm going to show you, you end up hiding the seam. We will lay the good sides of the waistband and the good sides of the pants facing, but we're only going to sew one of the sides. So separate them and just focus on the one side that is laying directly on the waistband area. Kind of explaining that verbally doesn't really come across great but hopefully you seeing me do it makes more sense so make sure when you pinned that all in place around there you then only sew that one section that is directly on there just sew one line across this area until you reach the other end then the other side that is kind of disjointed I have no idea what the technical term for this is but you pretty much you're creating like an inner hem so you fold it inwards pin or iron that in place and then I ended up sewing on the outer edge just so I could keep it clean because obviously you're going to see the outer edge more and you just pretty much do a top stitch all the way around there it secures that hand in place and that is your waistband essentially done. to go and the section that sits underneath is where the button is going to go so we'll focus on the top section first and lay our button on top to reference how wide of an area we need to allow ideally on the pants we'll make the buttonhole go width ways once you've figured out the placement that you want it to be pop a dot on one side and a dot on the other side remove the button and then just draw one line between these dot points and that is kind of going to be the section that we want to open up to allow the button to go through now if you have a button foot and a button setting on your machine go ahead and create your buttonhole using that and then if you don't have that setting you can be like me and we'll just create a frame so I've switched my machine to a zigzag setting on your widest setting and at the very tip of that line do a zigzag back and forth repeat that underneath and then do the thinner settings on either side and then you essentially have created a frame for the buttonhole then grab your seam ripper or some fabric scissors and trim open the inner section and then just make sure that your button actually fits in and out of there once that is all complete we then need to figure out the placement of the button on the underside so all I do is literally that top half that we've created is over lap it where it would naturally sit grab a fabric chalk or pencil or something and put that through the hole and mark the placement of where you would like the button to sit thread a hand needle tie a little knot at least three inches off the end so you have a little tail start on the underside pop your button on there and just pretty much go back and forth until you feel like the button is nice and secure on there go back through so that you finish on the underside trim the needle off and then tie at least a few knots on there so again it feels like it's nice and secure and not going to fall off trim any excess thread off and that is your button and button hole all done and then finally we are up to the last step i believe so yes 
we are just going to hem the bottom section again this might be a good point to try it on if your pants are too long you might need to bring it up or even just do a larger hem to get it to the point of where you want it to sit or if you're like me and you just kind of need to make do with what you had I just did a double fold all the way around the bottom section even including in that inner split section which was about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter first fold and then I did that again I tried to do it as small as I could just so that I didn't lose too much length but if you do have the luxury of having extra length on there you can make this hem as large or as small as you want again you can iron this in place if you find that easier for when you sew or just pin it sew around that bottom section and then when you get to the corners turn and go up the split turn again and go across the split back down and then back along the bottom that means we should have a beautiful pair of pants i hope that all made sense i never know if what i'm saying is actually coming across in a way that makes sense but if you did happen to follow along i hope you enjoyed it these pants are my obsession at the moment they are so much fun so many ways to style it if you enjoyed this don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe as i've got so many more creations in the works to share with you guys can't wait to see your DIYs. If you do give this a go, tag me at The Essentials Club as I do love seeing your outcomes. And don't forget to jump on the offer that is in the description box of this video for Skillshare. As I'm sure if you've made it this far through the video, you must be a very crafty and intrigued person, which pretty much ticks all boxes to jump on Skillshare. So make the most of that offer while you can. Well, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are and I will see you guys in the upcoming videos. <laughs> you can't blame it.